Thank you, Chief. Uh, I've been asked to speak about uh, the Trojan plant, and I want to spend a few minutes on that. And then I want to talk about what I really want to talk about. Uh, the, there are about 108 nuclear plants left in the United States, down from a peak of 113. It is one of the great historic struggles which we are slowly winning. And uh, the first of the large nuclear plants to be decommissioned is the Trojan plant. Now, the plan by PGE is what we have called quick and dirty. They want to gut the plant, get some of the most radioactive elements out, get them shipped up the river, bury them in a hole at Hanford, and that way uh, eliminate the possibility that the uh, plant might uh, sit idle for uh, 50 or 100 years, which would be the preferred option so that when it is eventually dismantled, it will be done uh, in a more deliberative fashion. It will be done in a manner which, which uh, has lower risks for the workers and for the surrounding community. This is not, the risks here are not akin to the risk of operating a nuclear power plant. They are uh, uh, orders of magnitude lower. Nonetheless, the important thing about this struggle, which uh, uh, Dan Meek and Linda Williams have led uh, uh, from, from the uh, legal side, is that we want to see that it's done right so that the precedent gets set, not just uh, uh, for us, but for all these other plants which will follow in the way. The question of uh, uh, how they're doing, uh, you've all read the newspapers. Uh, uh, we had uh, injunctions uh, from the Ninth Circuit, which were ultimately withdrawn, and uh, uh, they have been allowed to remove the steam generators. Uh, their, their their style is fait accompli, you know, cut a hole in the thing, start pulling the things out, and then when the court stops you, you go in and say, well, look, we're half done with it, and it's costing us $60,000 a day, and, uh, you know, what are we going to do, put it back? Uh, it's, a, it's a clever strategy. Our legal team worked with uh, a group at Yankee Row, which is a small nuclear plant, which, uh, which also had this large component removal, and uh, they obtained a ruling from the First Circuit Federal Court of Appeals which said that what they did at Yankee Row, which is what they have now done at Trojan, is illegal. The problem is that uh, it was easy for the court to say because it was a done deal, so they didn't have to, in essence, take over the decommissioning of the plant themselves. Now, courts have taken over school districts, they've taken over state prison systems. They hate the idea of having to run things themselves. That's not what they're equipped for. And so this is an advantage that the industry has. Uh, so we have got... Some, uh, some pretty good law, but basically uh, they have gone ahead and taken out some of the large components of Trojan. They may try to take out the reactor, and that will be uh, an enormous struggle. But uh, how it will all turn out uh, uh, remains to be seen, and uh, we have the uh, finest lawyers in the Northwest, uh, Dan Meek and Linda Williams, uh, working on it. What I want to, uh, what I want to talk about today is... Um, really something I had uh, planned on talking about at all. I was, I was inspired by, by listening to uh, uh, Ed Fadley uh, just get up and speak from the heart. And I thought, well, geez, here, here are all my friends, and, uh, and, and I, uh, I should talk to them. I was, I was reading a story. You may have seen it. It was in the front page of the Oregonian uh, maybe three months ago. And they talked about some uh, lady who's got a little store up in the mountains of Idaho. And she's got little plastic bullet holes, like a decoration on, on the front of her uh, uh, little place there uh, to show that she's uh, serious. And uh, the, uh, she said that uh, the militias are always after her to, uh, to sign up and join their political movement. And uh, uh, she said that, that she, she's just not quite sure what to do. She says, she said, you know, Look at McNamara's book, she said. The government was lying about Vietnam from the beginning. The whole thing was a mistake, and they were keeping the truth from us. She said, the government lies to us all the time. And the government just steps on little people like me. It doesn't care about us at all. Things are, are, are being controlled by people who don't even know or care that we exist. And she said she was, she was thinking about maybe joining the militias, because they were, they were always you know, knocking at her door. And I read that, and I said, my god, lady. You know, this is a tragedy because she's one of us. 
She's got it right. And yet, who is knocking on her door? Not us. We're missing something here. And I was reading today the New York Times. Wonderful story. You remember the, uh, the anti-terrorism bill? This monstrosity, this, this, this major step toward making an American police state, giving vast new powers to the federal government to, to, to wiretap us, vast new powers over our rights to be free from illegal search and seizure. Vast new powers to, to throw people out on the basis of, 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 of secret testimony for charges that, that the accused never even gets to hear. Remarkable stuff. 91 to 8, it passed the United States Senate. And you know what? Read about it in the Times on the front page. It is blocked. It's not going anywhere. You know by who? What they call in the first paragraph an unusual coalition. <laughs> of conservative Republicans and civil libertarian Democrats. People who are concerned about Ruby Ridge. Who look at the FBI and say, geez, you know, it was a death squad they sent up there. Well, you know, that, that doesn't surprise us. That may, that may be a rude awakening to the far right. But we know about government death squads. We know what happened to the Black Panthers. We know what happened to left-wing leaders. If you, read, if you read Covert Action Quarterly just this week, they talk about Walter Ruther, whose plane crashed because the altimeter wasn't working in bad weather, showed he was higher than he was. Did you know that exactly that same thing had happened 18 months before? And they just pulled out in the nick of time. Read the article. The examination of the altimeter showed that this thing was just checked all the time, had seven things wrong with it, a loose screw rattling around inside. You read the article and you say, you know what? It looks like it hit. We know people were being hit. We have a lot of suspicions about who was taken out. A lot of questions we'll never know the answer to. But, but now the right wing understands that they can be targets too. This is what we might call an opportunity. Some of us have, have formed an alliance with right wing groups and the Coalition for Initiative Rights because we have found people who we agree with very little except that they will stand to defend the initiative rights against those who want to take them away. And you know what? Their enemies are our enemies. The utilities, the big companies, the shopping centers. The corporate agenda is to get rid of initiative rights. And, and those right-wing activists who have used the initiative process while we have been derelict in our use of it, they're standing up for it, and we'd better stand with them because the enemy... How does it go? The enemy of my enemy is my friend, or at least my ally. We're going to agree to disagree. And if we decide that we're too good to stand with some people, we will lose our initiative rights. And I absolutely guarantee you that. And we can feel smug about who we wouldn't stand up with because we don't like their politics and go down with them together. But I suggest that we take a look at those people on the right whom we have warred against in so many struggles and recognize that there's something to the notion that there is no left and there is no right, there is a top and there is a bottom. And the people on top abuse us all. And some of us at the bottom have the right analysis 
and some of us at the bottom have the wrong analysis. But they're not our enemies, they're just people whose minds need to be gotten right. And we can help. And on some things, they are right. On some things, we can agree on. Police state legislation, we can agree on. Initiative rights, we can agree on. Corporate welfare. They want $10 billion worth of silicon plants in the Willamette Valley. They're going to use all the water. They're going to bring far more people than they're ever going to employ. They're going to burden us with all kinds of infrastructure payments, much higher property taxes in a boom and bust industry. For what? So when we go to the Deschutes River, we'll have fishermen next to us? Don't forget dump solvent in our water. And dump solvent in our water for low-paying jobs, which people will flock in much greater numbers than the jobs will ever be created to fill. I had Bob Tiernan on my radio show, Bad Bob. The arch-villain in the right wing, right? He's against light rail. I said, we well, you know, so am I. All that money to go from, from town center to Lloyd Center, I'm sorry. Some people are making a lot of money off of it, and people all over the country are paying a lot. What's it really for? It's somebody else's agenda. It's not ours. I said, what about all these silicon plants and all these subsidies where they're playing off one community against another? blackmailing people for jobs. He says, I'm against it. I said, what if we didn't pay him any subsidies? Do you want all these big companies coming in from out of state, plopping down in here? He thought about it. He said, we well, don't come to think of it, even without the subsidies, I don't want them. <laughs> and I said, well, let me ask you this, Tiernan, as long as I got you here. Do you want more people coming to Oregon? Do you want out-of-state businesses to come here to Oregon? Or should we say, let's work with the people we've got here. Train them, get jobs for them, build the businesses that we've got here, let them grow to fill the need. And he thought long and hard about it. He said, well, you know, that is what I believe in, come to think of it. Now, will he be there when the time comes? And they talk about ex extending the... the, the uh, the land use uh, boundaries? You know, will he really put his boats where his mouth is? I don't know. But let's call them out on it. Let's begin the dialogue. What do we really want? What do they really want? Where are we not going to agree? Where are we going to fight? Well, here we won't agree and there we'll fight. That's all right. But, you know, they're just rabble just like us. They're getting screwed just like us. They're outsiders like us. They're people like us. And if they have attitudes that are bigoted or hateful, those attitudes aren't going to go away because we despise them or we ignore them. Or we do everything to let them know that we're better than they are. Let's call them out on the principles that they espouse. When they talk about family values, <coughs> when they talk about hard work, when they talk about honest labor, a day's work, paying your taxes, the government providing benefits for what we pay in equal measure to what they extract, Let's say, what's all this about legalized gambling? My friend just got a job teaching out in East County, and the children, when she says, what do you want to do when you grow up? They say, well, I, I want a Maserati, I want this, I want that. They think of things that they are going to have. She's, how are you going to get them? What are you going to do for a living? She gets blank stares back. What does it mean to be a success? You know what they tell her? Win the lottery. Let that sink in. 
And why the hell not? The state of Oregon, with no opposition that I've heard anywhere, puts on ads on the radio, on the television, saying, you know what? Your life is wretched. You hate your job. Things are miserable for you, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can do something about it. Buy a ticket. Ooh. Get lucky. Our state is teaching our children that message. And you wonder why people don't want to pay taxes? Giving money to the government's for suckers. The government is a pimp and a liar. We all know it. Why should we pay taxes? Let the dumb people pay the taxes. Let the addicts pay the taxes. Let the new generation that we're growing up to be stupid and lazy and think that a successful life means getting lucky. Let them carry the burden. Let's call the right-wingers out and say, listen, you say you believe all these things. Prove it. We believe in family values. We believe in hard work. We believe in paying taxes and the government being fair and honest in its dealings with us. We don't want a government that's a liar and a pimp. We're not alone here. There are brothers and sisters out there that we need to reach out to. We won't always agree. Sometimes we'll have to fight them. But y'all know what's happening. In the last 20 years, the percentage of income, the percentage of wealth in this country, controlled by the top 1%, has gone from 20% to 40% in a generation. And what have they got us doing? Fighting down here. They got the middle class and the lower class thinking that the problem is black women who want a few bucks a month so they can raise their own children and keep their own families together. They think they're the enemy. They're making us fight against each other. They're filling us with phony garbage issues. Gay rights, it's a garbage phony issue. It is. All this stuff about, oh, there's an agenda and they're going to steal our children. It's just, it's nonsense. You know it and I know it. But look at all the energy that people are wasting in fighting an agenda that doesn't exist to change people who were made by God. Phony battles are being fought. Necessary energy is being siphoned off in the wrong directions. But, you know, we've got some people who feel that way doing good things, like working on an initiative to get the legislature out of the initiative process. So this, this, this House Bill 24, which would be a tremendously damaging blow, which would require us to get equal numbers of signatures from each congressional district, so they'd never be able to do that to us again. We've got people who fight gay rights working to fight the changes in the initiative system. We've got those people doing good work. That is a step in the right direction. We need to expand our thinking. Gun control is the most powerful issue for so many people on the right. Can we acknowledge the possibility that they're not crazy? I mean, you've got, you've got these ghettos where they've squeezed people in battered them, made them, made them ignorant, made them poor, taken away their jobs, poisoned them, made them angry and frustrated. And what's their answer? What's the establishment's answer? Jail and take their guns away. Just build enough jails and take their guns away, and we've got a solution. Well, what have we got for all the effort we put into gun control? An assault weapons ban that has given us more assault weapons than we've ever had before. And more all the time. 
and some gun registration which may have done a little good around the edges in a nation with 200 million guns and huge numbers of well-meaning people having poured generations of effort into trying to get something better out of it. Maybe, maybe it's time to throw a bone to our friends on the right on that. Maybe it's not worth all the blood if it means that much to them. But maybe they're not that crazy. Maybe given this government, all of our guns should not be the first thing on our agenda. Maybe it should be something we should be able to put on the bottom yeah, for a generation. Well, tell the story. So those are my thoughts. <laughs>